Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In the previous video on crystallography, we discussed the zones and zone axes of a crystal. Today, we'll be moving on to interfacial angles and how we measure them. Crystals in nature rarely look exactly alike in terms of their size and shape. But in 1669, Danish scientist Nicholas Steno made some important observations about crystals. Steno showed that the bounding surfaces of crystals are not by chance. Rather, the similar faces on different crystals of the same mineral species have constant angles. His work led to Steno's law of constant angles, also known as the first law of crystallography. This law states that the angles between corresponding faces on crystals are consistent for all crystals of the same mineral. To illustrate this, Steno examined the interfacial angles in various quartz crystals, including both perfect and distorted crystals. He precisely sliced prismatic quartz crystals at right angles to their length. Then, he measured the angles between adjoining faces and carefully traced their shapes onto paper. Regardless of the crystal's shape, Steno found that the angle between adjoining faces was always 120 degrees. Similar results were obtained for other interfacial angles between corresponding faces on quartz crystals with different habits. So, whether the crystal grew under ideal conditions or not, if you compare the angles between corresponding faces on various crystals of the same mineral, the angles remain the same. Let us now define this interfacial angle of a crystal. In crystallography, the interfacial angle is the angle between the inward facing normals, that is, the lines perpendicular to two crystal faces. Such a lines are called the poles to the crystal face. Keep in mind, this is not the same as the visible angle you see on the outside of a crystal. Instead, it relates to the internal structure. Mathematically, it's calculated as 180 degrees minus the internal angle between the two faces. In this figure, the interfacial angle is labeled as A, and it is complementary to the angle B. Do remember that, accurately measuring interfacial angles is vital in crystallographic studies of minerals, as it helps us to identify and classify different minerals. While Nikolaus Steno observed the remarkable constancy of interfacial angles in crystals of a specific mineral, he couldn't explain why this occurred. The key breakthrough came with the discovery of X-rays. By revealing the internal arrangement of atoms in crystals, X-ray diffraction explained the reason behind Steno's law. It became clear that the fixed atomic structure of a particular mineral dictates the constant angles between its crystal faces. These interfacial angles are measured using a goniometer. There are two main types of goniometers. The first one is contact goniometer, invented by Karin Jot in the 1780s. It has a graduated arc similar to a protractor and one movable arm. The arm and base of the arc are positioned in close contact with the crystal face and the reading is taken directly. As shown in the figure, A is the vertically opposite angle, which is the interfacial angle. Because it's complementary to angle B, the interfacial angle can be directly read on the arc of the goniometer. This instrument is simple to use, but may not be as accurate for smaller crystals. Next is the reflecting goniometer, which is also known as an optical goniometer. This instrument is better suited for measuring interfacial angles of smaller crystals. Developed by Wollaston in 1809, it has since been significantly modified and improved. Reflecting goniometers are used for more precise measurements. Here's how a reflecting goniometer works. A crystal mounted on the instrument can be rotated about a zone axis. This allows it to reflect light from its faces into a telescope. The angle through which the crystal must be rotated to reflect successive beams of light from two adjacent faces into the telescope determines the angle between the faces. The instrument has a graduated rotating disc. With a light source on one side and a telescope on the other, the crystal is placed on the disc. A signal is sent through light source and the image is observed through the telescope. Let's say the light source is M in this diagram. 
The eye at P, looking at the face of the crystal, BC, observes a reflected image of M, in the direction of PN. The crystal may now be so changed in its position that, the same image is seen reflected by the next face, and in the same direction, PN. To effect this, the crystal must be turned around, until the adjacent crystal face, denoted by the line, ABX, has the present direction of the crystal face, BC. We can say that, the angle CBX in this diagram, measures the number of degrees, through which the crystal must be turned. This angle is measured, by attaching the crystal to a graduated circle, which turns with the crystal. Now, this measured angle CBX, is supplement of the internal angle ABC, between the two faces. We know that, supplementary angles are those angles, that sum up to 180 degrees. We have already discussed that, mathematically, the interfacial angle of a crystal is calculated as, 180 degrees minus the internal angle between the two faces. Therefore, in this case, the interfacial angle is equal to 180 degrees minus angle ABC. Here we can see that, the result we get is equal to the measured angle, CBX. So, the reflecting goniometer gives directly the interfacial angle of a crystal. This is how you measure the interfacial angle of a crystal. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.